Hi there guys, my name's Simon Grief. I'm an event rider and I'm here chatting to Blueberry because I'm at Carl Hester's yard because I'm sponsored by Equisafety and um, well, we've come to talk to Carl Hester about his new range that's been created by Nicky Fletcher of Equisafety. So after I've finished chatting to him, we're going to have a quick chat with Carl. Okay guys, so we're, um, I'm in Carl's tack room and um, hi Carl, so I was going to ask you a few quick fire kind of questions and um, we've got some people who've asked some questions as well on them. Um, online. Um, first one, uh, what is the craziest rumour that you've ever heard about yourself? Oh, these are the, yeah, these little questions always catch me out. Crazy rumours. Uh, I did hear actually once that um, I was autistic. Uh, and in fact, what had happened was somebody actually said to me, uh, it's amazing how well you do considering you're autistic. So I said, I, I think I'm from? autistic, and uh, in fact what actually happened was I used to work at the Fortune Centre years ago when I moved to England, and I in fact looked after autistic kids uh, when I was 16 years old, oh. so that's where, you know, that's Chinese whispers for you, it got construed, but just for the record I'm not, <laughs> as far as I'm aware, autistic, but uh, you know, it was a great great beginning as well, I've ridden some, I've ridden Flint Curtis, who won badminton, uh, and in fact... <laughs> did you, it wasn't that great experience. I loved riding him. That was like I didn't feel like I, I never felt I left fun. the floor when I jumped in because he was so smooth. I jumped on Drain that won the Derby uh, that um, William Fowler had. That was an amazing experience. Uh, and I've ridden Vallegro, so I don't think there's another horse anywhere that I would have liked to have ridden. I think looking back from the past, there was a horse called Rembrandt that won uh, a lot of dressage gold medals, and it looked like the lightest most beautiful dress I've ever seen. I always remember that's what really, I think, converted me to want to do it. So if yeah. it was alive today, I'd love to sit on him again. Um, I th yeah, I think for, for me, I always liked uh, Ginny Lane's horses. Yeah. And remember Master Craftsman? Mm, yeah. Uh, the Bay yeah. horse, and I thought he was... I, you, I loved you him beautifully that trained. Yeah, yeah that's, I think that's the main point, isn't it? Exactly. She was so good at training them. Which makes us look better. That's probably <laughs> that what we yeah, That would be good. <laughs> Um, and uh, what is your what's your worst fall or injury? Uh, um, well, I actually broke my leg, uh, my ankle in several places when I was twenty one, and I just made it to my first European Championship. And basically, we had our final team selection on the weekend, and uh, the lady who owned the horse I was riding said to me. Why don't you go home for three days and then come back? We're going to Italy the following weekend for the European Championships. So it was a big deal for me, you know. I mean, I'd never been on a team before, and this had happened quite quickly. And um, I was eventing as well at the same time, so I came home, took out one of my uh, favourite event horses, which was uh, just a young chestnut mare, and um, cantering across the field. Uh, pheasant flew up, she turned over, and the um, steering wheel crushed my ankle. Oh no. So yeah, I was off for uh, quite a while. So so, you, obviously, so your dressage and eventing slightly overlapped? Well, yeah, they but, did. Um, yeah. But doing pure dressage and eventing. When did, when did you decide to stop eventing completely? Uh, well basically when I got the job with Dr. Bechtel Simon, um, right. I think he felt you know that he was investing so much time in me. So it was a joint decision training. kind of thing? Yeah, and I mean I, I did realise you know I was you know, I was quite happy like producing horses. I didn't really have big ambitions to go uh, to Edmonton like yourself. Um, I think that's a fairly, I think you have to be a very special type of character to do that. And I'm yeah. not sure that was me. So, I mean, but it was not a difficult decision, but Dr. Bechtel Simon said to me, you know, look, we're investing time in your training in horses. So, you know, I would rather you didn't. And did, and did you, once you made that decision, never look back? No, I went back to it. I left, I stayed with Dr. B for um, three and a half years, and then when I left, I went straight back to eventing. I won at Milton Keynes, my first event back, which was great. Uh, that's probably like, the only event I've still got on video, and that was back in 1993. Total, total recall. Yes, it was yeah. total recall, that's yeah. right. So I, um, I managed, yeah, I still have that on a, on a, on a video nowadays, that I can look at if ever I want to remember my days. Um, so, uh, talking about the range, the, the range here, your range. Um, which is your favourite, Carl Hester? Well, interestingly Carl. enough, I mean, my uh, colours first of all. My logo is green uh, yeah. for my website, and uh, a colour that I've always loved. But I like wearing black and white personally. But the interesting thing is to see the green in a jacket 
yeah, it's really vibrant and it really it's a bit stands different, out. And it's it? different. Yeah. You don't see colours like that. Whereas black often. and white is very classic. That's right. And I mean, black and white is, is, is always a cool favour, I think, with everybody. And, uh, you know, if you're a little bit more out of the box, I think you'd probably like the green. Yeah. Um, but the interesting thing, how it really, like, came about was the fact that, you know, I was always, you know, told, you always think, because if you work with horses, that perhaps you are... Um, able to wear as many scruffy clothes as you like yeah. but of course the reality is like yeah. your head. and the reality is like you know we're always you know I'm always either teaching or riding and you want to look smart um, and when the opportunity came up to you know like have a little bit of input you know like what would you wear what do you like wearing then I just thought actually you can look you can go to work and look smart yeah uh, and so that was your, your main Doing this range, that was your main thought process. Absolutely. Like you wanted and to I mean, there's the looks. safety aspect involved in it as well. Of course, the colours are great. They stand out, you yeah. know, for especially for my girls or, and the guys here. If they go hacking or something, I know they're going to be seen. Uh, and, but it's also a very wearable and, and smart clothes for, for working in. Yeah. Um, okay, so moving on to what is the what is the funniest or weirdest thing that's happened to you in a dressage arena? Uh, well, has it always gone perfectly? No, it hasn't well. always gone perfectly. Because it definitely yeah. hasn't been. Well, we have, you know, we when I went to my first European Championship, um, I had a horse uh, that was a schoolmaster that basically was looking after me, and um, they always had a show groom that used to put the quarter marks on, and it was like dressage horses didn't have those, you know, this was just for showing, but they had a show groom who put quarter marks on the horse. And uh, I was at a European Championship, I was going around the edge of the bell when, as I went out the centre line, the horse put its tongue over the bit. Yeah. And this long tongue was going around when I was riding, and I'd never been in a situation before, but I was on a team. So, basically, I'm looking, looking at somebody for like, how, do I keep going or do I come out? Um, and everyone was like, no, because you're on a team, so you have to keep going. <laughs> and as I went past the judges box, which she obviously felt very sorry for me, the judges see in the European Championship, so she said, quite loudly, so she goes, well, he doesn't need to worry because they can always play chess on the horse's backside at the end of his test. <laughs> uh, yeah, and it did kind of relax me because I felt it was all going terribly wrong, which it was. Uh, and um, I wasn't eliminated, but it was probably one of my worst tests. But I always remember her words uh, to say that I could turn around and play. That kind of like cheered me up knowing it was all yeah. going so wrong. And, um um, I, had, um, I did a test once and... Um, I was doing the walk, it was half circle, half circle, and all of a sudden she just she didn't want to know the man that I was on and she was like, I've had enough. And she, she started standing up and launching and she launched her way out of the arena. And then across three arenas that were next to her. <laughs> and then I managed to sort of get So you're right, you you ruined three other people's Three other people's yeah, yeah. And then I came up, I was like, I'm gonna bring her back and I took her into the arena and I, and I and I managed to finish the test and the judge said, You do realise that you never eliminated? I was like, Yes, I do. I just <laughs> want to play and then um a week later in Horse and Hound, it said um, Piggy French won her um, her section at whatever event it was on the 21 dressage, despite Simon Green and Minnie Minnie Mini galloping through the arena. <laughs> uh, like, well, it's nice to be famous for something. Yeah, well, I thought they could have maybe not named me, but um, uh, Okay, so who would be your best dinner party guest? Um... Oh, I could have dinner with anybody really. I don't yeah. have uh, I don't have any favourites. Is there like I, a um, a movie star or singer that you like? Um, I, like somebody, I think I'd like somebody I was probably comfortable with. So I mean, like most people, you're kind of like awestruck with, aren't you? So you know, you wouldn't relax. I quite like um, people that have worked in the films. My father was an actor, so I'm quite used to those sort of people. They're quite. Um, they're quite out of character all the time. Yeah. Um, so I quite like that. I was lucky. Um, Piggy came here once actually and bought um, Jennifer Saunders with her and um, took me out to dinner and that was a very entertaining evening. And she promised me because I was so excited to have dinner with her that she would organise me to have dinner with Dawn French one day. And it hasn't happened. Oh, but no. you never know who's watching you do when you're doing <laughs> these things. I mean, my, my dream might come true. You never know, you never know. And so I wanted to ask you about with your father being a... Um, because you were on, uh, you were brought up. Because we were born in the same county, Cambridgeshire. And looked it up. It said on online that you were born in Cambridgeshire. No, I wasn't born. In oh, Cambridge. that's on your Wikipedia. You <laughs> that, is it? it? Oh, well, they've got that wrong. Um, Everyone says Wikipedia, but oh, the truth is not. Is it? Oh my god, we've got something uh, in common. Definitely not Cambridge. No, I was brought up in the Channel Islands in Sark. Right. Okay. And um, how, how how come you were? Uh, well, my uh, well, no, my my father basically um, decided to live over here in England because obviously that's where he was going to work. So um, my mother and I stayed in the Channel Islands and right. I went to school down there and brought up there and then came back to live 
uh, here in England when I was um, 15 years old. Yeah. So, and then met my dad back here again. And um, he, yeah, he's been in all sorts of Coronation Street, EastEnders and films, yeah. you know, things like that. Bit parts, nothing major. Yeah. As my friend always says, you know, uh, uh, yeah. The wooden, the wooden actors back on telly, she always brings me up whenever he's on, and she's very really mean, but he, you know, because when you've met somebody, you realise, you know, actually, that's what they are, they are, you know, he is definitely an actor. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's, yeah, it's not a non-horsey family, um, which we all find quite strange, because no one knows where we get it from, but going back a couple of generations, my grandmother's father, in fact, was, um, ran a big um, kennels uh, up in Buckinghamshire. Yeah. So that's obviously my like generations back then. My yeah, Miss Miss because yeah, from. my great great grandfather he was really into point to point and he was there quite, you go. quite successful. Somebody then, has after, to pick after up that, the jeans. Then, no one else was interested. Then I picked up. Um, right. Okay. Um, oh, Charlotte wanted to know: Do you have any lucky pants? Charlotte. Well, as in, as, sorry, Charlotte online. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> not that. Sorry, not Charlotte. Charlotte, please. <laughs> um, I have my yeah. I ha I have pants that I ride. Put it that way. Right, okay. Um, I don't yeah, have I'm a lucky it. pair because um, that wouldn't be very uh, hygienic. So I've got lots of pairs that I ride in and I save them just for competitions. Um, and uh, yeah, they travel around the world with me. Yeah. I think it's important because, you know, like, it, I mean, I know it's quite, you know, people think it's a bit weird, but actually riding, you know, like comfort is really important. Um, and I always, you know, I, you know, sometimes I watch a really good rider and I watch the way they sit on the horse. And I was thinking, you really have to, like, you, you know, especially for, for dressage, you have to let your seat down, you have to yeah. be part of the saddle. I thought you were going to say, you need some better pants. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think maybe they have better pants, that's why I always think, no. So I do have, um, yeah, I do have my comfort pants. And um, I'm talking to Charlotte, we had another question online. Um, what is it that you saw in Charlotte when you first saw her, and, and did you see this huge um, talent straight away? Uh, I think with Charlotte, what I, it was more what I felt, because I actually was an assessor uh, at Talent Spotting Day, she brought her horse along, I rode her horse. So I didn't particularly, Charlotte didn't particularly stand out as uh, an amazing rider on that day when I got on her horse and I thought, but this is amazingly trained. Right. Yeah, okay. it was really, it was only a young horse, six years old, but he felt it was really easy to ride. So it was more the, it was more yeah, the feel of the Yeah, what she done with this said. horse was really, was really great. And although the horse didn't, looked like a superstar, he felt like he'd been trained like one. And uh, so I got off and I said to um, the panel of judges, I said, you know, this horse has been really well trained, you need to take this horse and this rider yeah. uh, and put them forward. And um, so I obviously spoke to Charlotte after the, the, the day and uh, she said, could she come and you know, have a week's lessons? And, and she was really excited that I'd ridden her horse and that I thought she'd done a really good job. So. She came to fill in over Christmas uh, one year. Well, I think it's eleven or twelve years ago now. Yeah. And um, she never left. Kind of never yeah, left. Ne never really. It was one of those stories. She just never left. You know, yeah. that was it. And she moved in. She took over all my horses. And I loved enthusiasm. You know what? There's nothing like it. It's infectious. Um, you know, when someone comes to ride to ride my horses like that, all she wanted to do was ride every single horse. Yeah. And every day she said, "Can I sit in it? Can I sit in it?" And I, and I was just like. Yes, I love that sort of enthusiasm, uh, enthusiasm for a job and for the horses. I imagine all the difference, isn't it? Yeah, and she wanted to compete, you know, and I've never really been a competitor, you know, I mean, I obviously do compete, I have to, but, you know, it's not my pleasure. So to have somebody also that just wanted to compete all the horses and everything was, um, you know, really married up beautifully with, with where I was at that time. And so obviously you guys get on extremely well, um, but another question was, um, what do you find the most annoying thing about Charlotte? Her and don't be don't cheat. <laughs> <laughs> her voice, uh, you know. That's, that uh, must be quite awkward. Well, especially when she breaks me, when she's like, you know, like moaning at me or complaining or, uh, you know, we, we all have niggles. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, we are, and everyone who knows us, you know, when we're together, it is like an old married couple, admittedly. Uh, and we're quite happy arguing. Just because we disagree, of course, doesn't mean we hate each other. Yeah. That's number one. Uh, you know, we're entitled to disagree, and I mean, the older she's got, the more opinionated she's got. Um, and I have to listen to that, and obviously she has ideas as well now, you know, she's trained some horses now. 
you know, very well and very successfully, obviously up to gold medal standard. Yeah. So, you know, there are conversations that, I mean, obviously that we have now that perhaps we didn't have 10 years ago. So, yeah, I mean, you know, that irritates me sometimes, but, you know, I know I irritate her, but she's, you know, she is somebody that, you know, I can work with yeah. and has made me better. And I think that's the main thing, you know, I think, you know, okay, I, I, I did a lot for her in the early days and obviously set her on a path. But now it's a two-way street, and yeah. you know and that's you why must, it works. You must like help each other through tough times, because I mean you've been doing this for a long time. Of course, and, and yeah. There must be some really yeah. tough times along the way. And you know from competing yourself, like oh, pressure, yeah, 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 yeah. Press, All, pressure every day, every and major day. events yeah. can be immense. You know, like you're trying. You know, not only are you you know worried for yourself and your horse. You know, you've got owners, you've got people to deal with, you've got press, especially at like big occasions, and those were things that um, she needed a lot to help with. Um, and they are things that we, you know, do do help each other with. So yeah. it does work very well, and you know, she 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 can now deal with those pressures a lot better. And if you're having like a you know, a tough time, you know, in whatever way, whether it be to do with the horses or personal or whatever, what's your way of dealing with it? Is it to go off and ride and be away, or R riding is a is a luxury. I mean, really is. I mean, for me, riding at home is a luxury. I mean, I could do this all day long. I mean, yeah. I could just ride all day happily at home. I love riding. I love training. Um, it does de-stress me. Um, I, I try and go away for a few days um, every month, three or four days. Yeah. And uh, just go and have some sun and relaxation and food and eat and, and come back and die again. That's, that's, a really, that's a great idea because I, I, I do find that and every year I say, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure I have Mondays off. Or yeah. It normally be a Monday. And it never materialises. Yeah. And you have you to make, you have to make that yeah. happen. Like, yeah. yeah. Before it, you know, before you, you know, well, the saying that I always live off is, you know, never get too busy making a living, you forget to make a life. Yeah. Uh, it's a brilliant, it's a brilliant way of looking at it like that because, of course, we all have to make a living. Horses need looking after all the time. Uh, but you also need to recharge your batteries and you need to be excited about what you're doing, which, I, you know, the balance seems to be right now. Yeah. Well, Carl, thank you very much for. Um, giving us your time and, and giving us some insights into things. Um, I have one last question. Um, who is the best interviewer that you've ever encountered? Mr. Simon Green, of course. Um, <laughs> you know, I haven't been interviewed very much in my life, so... Uh, yeah, interesting, because I think there's a few questions there that you asked that perhaps I haven't uh, talked about before or haven't been asked before, so... Uh, this is good. Pleasure to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you too. great in the top. <laughs> thanks very so much. Yeah. And thanks very much for joining us, guys.